for me to start talking a welcome. <laughs> All right, welcome to St. Richard's Episcopal Church. This is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Kim Wheeler is our parishioner and our guest pianist for the next three, four weeks. Four altogether, which is wonderful, and we um, are blessed and lucky to have um, not only a, a wonderful pianist, but she's also a composer. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll hear some of Kim's, I don't know if you're going to throw that in there, some of Kim's original compositions. Your bulletin is found on a link on YouTube, Facebook, and at our website, www.strichards.org. Welcome to St. Richard's. opening hymn is found on page one of your service bulletin. Lord, give the great mission. Please stand.
Page 2. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving, by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply and delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dan dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts a child, so I will comfort you. You will be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants. And his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks. second reading is from Galatians. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. 
So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I'm writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, for neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our sequence hymn is on page five of your service bulletin, page five and six. In the cross of Christ I glory. Please stand. Remain in the same house, 
eating and drinking whatever they provide, the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick with it. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who said it. The son he returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of light. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. seated. Last week in Luke's Gospel, we've been tracking along with here uh, in year C since, since the season of Advent in uh, December. Year C in, the, in, in our lectionary cycle is, uh, is generally a lot of Luke. Last week in Luke's Gospel, Jesus shifted his focus of ministry from the region of Galilee, where he had been doing most of his work, and he set his face to Jerusalem, towards Jerusalem. And while in Galilee, he traveled with his disciples. When he sets his face to Jerusalem, he sends them ahead of him to prepare his way. Last week, it was the disciples who went ahead of Jesus into the villages and towns. And this week, there are 70 more, 70 more followers of Jesus who are sent ahead of him to prepare his way. 70 more disciples who have heard the good news that the kingdom of God is here. 70 more followers who are energized with the new creation that Jesus has announced, the new creation that comes with Jesus' healing and the new creation that comes with Jesus' message that God's love, God's mercy, and God's blessing is available to all people. Not just to the Pharisees, not just to those who sacrifice in the temple, not just to those who are pure and clean, but to all people. The poor, the blind, even the Samaritans. Those who in the society at the time would have been deemed unworthy or wrong or unclean. God's mercy, God's love, this new creation is for all people. Believe that this great prophet Jesus speaks with God's voice and says, Let all divisions cease and let us love one another with pure affection, as our collect says today, so that we all may be one that all may have the bread that they need for today, that all might be made feel to feel like they belong. Because God says, you all belong. You belong to me. This week in our gospel lesson, Jesus sends those 70 disciples, those 70 followers, those 70 believers out to where he plans to go himself. He sends them out to prepare his way to prepare that, uh, the towns to receive Jesus so that all people might have the opportunity to see him, to hear his words, and to have their lives changed with a new purpose to love 
each other, but more, to love, the unlo- to love even the unlovable, and to be released from a system of oppressive laws that the Pharisees were imposing, or to discover for the first time the true love of the one true God who created all that is and is with us always, even to the end of the age. And these 70 believers, these 70 followers, these 70 more disciples go two by two into the towns and into the villages on the way to Jerusalem. And uh, it, the gospel for today makes it sound like this, their mission is very short. It's not a long duration of time. They don't seem to be being sent into these places to stay for years. Uh, they're not there for long. When they go there, they encounter the people who live and work in the towns and villages. They heal the sick. These disciples do. These 70 do. They cast out demons. They do all the things that Jesus had been doing. And as was the custom of the day, they would then receive hospitality from the people in the towns. They would be invited to eat and to sleep in the homes of the people in those places. But remember last week, As we saw with the Samaritan village, the disciples who went there were rejected. They did not, there was no offer of hospitality. They were, the Samaritan village that they went into, indeed, um, their peace didn't stay on them. It returned to the disciples. They had to shake the dust off their feet. Fortunately, they just shook the dust off their feet and they didn't rain down fire from heaven on the Samaritan village like James and John wanted to. But Jesus stopped um, stopped that. He said, just shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. So Jesus was, d- does anticipate in this gospel lesson that they may be refused hospitality. Jesus anticipates rejection. Jesus anticipates some doubt. Jesus anticipates some fear among the people that, in these villages and towns. And it's a reasonable fear. Because people are accustomed to to getting nothing in life for free. The message that Jesus is preaching sounds too good to be true. The Jewish leaders and the authorities required obedience to the law. They required sacrifice. And they required contribution to the temple coffers. The Romans, who ruled Palestine at that time, taxed the people. They imposed great taxes on the people, even oppressive taxes. That was how it was then, and it's how it is now. It's the first thing that happens. Uh, what was the first person that you see when you go to the emergency room? It's a little person with an iPad that comes to get your insurance card and your credit card, almost always. Almost always the first person you'll encounter in our health system is someone who wants your information and wants to know how you're going to pay for the service. If you happen to find yourself ever in need of assistance with food or rent or anything else else financial, if you reach out to a government institution or even a private agency, there are forms that you will have to fill out. There are hoops, almost literal hoops, that you will have to jump through. There are lines that you will have to stand in, and there are websites that you will have to navigate. Maybe even a phone system that wants you to press one, two, or three, over and over and over. If you are in need of assistance, you have to be a genius in order to navigate uh, the social service system. And in addition to jumping through hoops to get financial assistance, inevitably, someone along your way will judge you. Lazy, dumb, and my favorite one. She's made some bad choices. Yeah. That's great, bad choices. Jesus sends these 70 people out to say, there are no bad choices. Love is free. Healing is free. Jesus is free. Love is free. Jesus sends the 70 to tell the people that healing from physical ailments, he's here to bring it to them for free. Release from the evil forces of the world that want to corrupt and destroy God's creatures, that's free too. And they were, they were there to give it to them. Now, the gospel also says, the laborers deserve to be paid. 
But Jesus doesn't instruct the 70 to demand some kind of even exchange. There's no, okay, I'll heal your blindness, but I get breakfast and lunch for that. How about that? And casting out a demon, that's a three-course dinner, right? There's, there's none of that going on. They are to go there and heal. They are to go to these towns and spread Jesus' message of love. And Jesus knows that their work and the work of the Holy Spirit will inspire the people of the towns and villages to give freely in return. There is this mutuality that goes with Jesus' healing. There is a mutuality, an interdependence that comes when you see the love that Jesus has come to bring. An interdependence on our Independence Day weekend. It's really, for the Christian church, about interdependence. And so it goes. Seventy followers of Jesus sow the seeds of love. They sow the seeds of mercy. They go and heal people. They bring God's grace and they prepare the way of Jesus. The way of this new creation that will ultimately be revealed in Jesus' death and resurrection. And ultimately revealed in us. The interdependent body of Christ in the world today. You and me and us together. We are the body of Christ in the world today. We are the followers that Jesus has set, sends out into the villages and towns to continue to inspire a mutual love and respect for all people that inspires more generosity and more hospitality. So the 70 return. They return to Jesus from their short mission. They are overwhelmed with joy that the power of the Holy Spirit actually worked through them. They healed people. They cast out demons. It worked, Jesus. It worked. And Jesus says joyfully, this is this, this crazy interesting phrase, I watched Satan fall like a bolt of lightning from the sky. That's how powerful their ministry was. That's how powerful their healing was. That's how powerful their message was. The world changed because they went and proclaimed a new creation. The world changes when we go and proclaim a new creation. Love first, love for all. And then there is Jesus declaring, I love this part too, just to mention it, uh, that he's given them authority to walk over snakes and scorpions. Did you catch that part? Did you catch that part? I love that part. This is one of those places in our scriptures that we absolutely can take and should take, metaphorically. <laughs> by the way, this is sort of an aside. I got stung by a scorpion once. And it wasn't because, I don't think it was, because I didn't believe in Jesus or the power of the Holy Spirit. I just, like, surprised the thing and it, you know, whacked me on my toe. It's, it's, it's a powerful sting. Uh, so anyway... The, the scorpions and snakes thing, if it was distracting you, which it did me this week, um, it's Jesus. The, the, the thing I love about it is I give you power to tread over scorpions and snakes. Jesus is simply putting an exclamation point on the fact that with God all things are possible. That with God all things are possible. And when you go boldly and proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, there's nothing to fear, nothing. And Jesus tells the disciples to rejoice because there is something they receive. There is something huge that they receive in exchange for their fearless missionary work. They receive those intangible spiritual benefits that Jesus prepares for all who love him. Joy and peace. Rejoice, Jesus says. Your names are written in heaven. So then... We have the same opportunity to go and to heal people, truly. We have the same opportunity to go and cast out demons. We have the same opportunity to go into the world and make somebody feel better about their life today because you reached out in love and with some hospitality. So let us work for the good of all, especially our family of faith, as St. Paul says in his letter uh, to the Galatians, our family of faith. The good we do in serving each other here at St. Richard's invariably translates 
into the wider community. We're going to grill up some hot dogs today after the service. And next week, we're going to make salad for the Coalition for the Homeless and feed the homeless in Orlando. Today, maybe you'll help one of the St. Richard's children or, or um, your neighbor mark their bingo card today. Maybe you'll help uh, mark the bingo card because we're going uh, to play bingo today. Tomorrow, maybe you'll volunteer with foster children. You throw a few dollars in the donut basket any given Sunday here at St. Richard's. And maybe Monday you'll be inspired to take a donut to your lonely neighbor. When we take care of each other here, we can't help but have it translate into the wider community. Because we believe that Jesus has come to change the world. And we believe that we are the body of Christ in the world today. We are here with Jesus to usher in a new creation of love and mercy. We are those who believe that this is true in the world today. We are those who can help others to know that this is true, not only by what we say, but through our acts of love and mercy. So go boldly, go bold, boldly after you play some bingo and eat some hot dogs. Go boldly, go boldly out into the world today. But watch out for those snakes and scorpions. Amen. And now let us stand together and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 7 of your service bulletin. Page 7. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people follow on page 7 of your service bulletin. Kneeling or standing as you wish, let us pray. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are loved, for this community, the nation, the world, for all order, justice, and freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our bishops Terry and Gregory and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and His Church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Bob B., Simone, Sasha, Johanna, Gina, Betsy, Sandra B., Betty, Stephanie, Dick, Priscilla, Linda, Pat, Val, Meredith, Hazel, Stan, and Ginny, and family and friends, Jimmy, Amy, Mary, and Judy, Anne Dunn, Chris, 
Nigel, Teresa and family, Sandra, baby Amelia, parents Brad and Lauren, Kathy, Wendy, Lucy and family, Jim and family, Sarah, Rachel, and Emma. For Jim, our aspirant to the priesthood, Cheryl, our aspirant to the diaconate. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. about what's going on at St. Richard's Episcopal Church. We are a church on a mission. We are here to discover God's grace and change our lives and change the whole world. We do that in very many ways. Today, we do that by feeding each other and, and hanging out together and playing some games and having good fellowship. We all in the service will have hot dogs and ice cream and chips and we are going to play some bingo. I opened the bingo bin from... You know, whenever the last time the bingo bin was open, and there were still prizes in there. So I don't know what they are, and they seem like like old weird prizes, but uh, maybe I'll know. Uh, I was like, what is it? And I'm like, why is this just supposed to be a prize? So, like, you know, it's like opening a time capsule after COVID, everything that we used to have out every year uh, has, has gotten to be time capsules. Uh, so we are doing that immediately following this service today. I would ask you as well on your way out the door uh, to pick up a, uh, a pan and make some salad. We only have the big pans left, so you can make a big pan of, of salad or like double the recipe or whatever. We are on the Coalition for the Homeless um, salad. We make the salad for the Coalition for the Homeless um, this coming Friday because it's the second Friday. And the first Friday was July 1st, so the second Friday is July 8th. But it's okay, Presbyterians, they, they, they can't make their hamburger casserole, so, but then you are coming with us, right, Pat? Our oven is broken. I told them, I said, we've got, we got three ovens right here at St. Richard's, but they didn't take me up on the offer. So, but you're coming down, right? Yeah, okay. So we, we are the helpers for Winter Park Presbyterian Church, of which Pat Morgan is is generally a regular version of Are you looking at me? Am I looking at you here? No? Okay. Is my mic my, is my okay. Um So we are, we're their partner, and uh, we're going down there with them. So please uh, drop off those sal make a salad. It's a really weird salad to make, but everybody loves it down at the Coalition. Um, <laughs> Make it and bring it to St. Richard's before 4 o'clock on, on Friday, and then we'll take it down and serve it. It's, it's fa a fascinating salad. Uh, been making it for years, though, right, Pat Morgan? Uh, okay, so that's, that's what we're doing on, uh, on Friday, and then uh, other stuff's 
um, happening. Oh, healing service, I knew. It's not in the, it is in the bulletin, but we have, um, in the summer, we go down to once a month for the healing service. So this coming Wednesday, the 6th, will be our uh, July healing service, uh, 12 noon, in, 12 noon, Lady Chapel. 12 noon, Lady Chapel, I'll be here. Uh, first Wednesday of August, and then we'll resume weekly healing services um, after Labor Day. Who's having a birthday? We celebrated Faith Butler's 91st birthday this morning at 8 o'clock. Finally. Okay, come on. Everybody hesitates. Stand right there. Bob McClure, stand on, stand on that side. And we'll make room for Bob McClure. All right, what day? What day? July 10th. Are you a July 4th baby, Bob McClure? Yeah. July 4th, yeah. No, no. July 7th. Sorry, July 7th. Okay. Um, is it a big birthday? Zero or five? 86. Bob will be 86. <laughs> Bob, which prayer would you like? On page... 830, we are going to pray prayer number 50. We've had a, uh, we have had a lovely um, exchange about wh which prayer is which, and Bob, Bob has um, good sensibilities about this particular prayer. I love it too. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday! How about anniversaries? Anybody having an anniversary? You're having an anniversary! Again this year! I know! Okay, I'm, I'm going to guess how many years. Yes, okay. to this year, it's, was it 20 last year? No. This year, it's 22. Oh, 23. 23! <laughs> 23 years ago, you promised to love each other forever. How about today? Still. Stand looking at each other, and I'm going to bless you. Sorry. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Continue to send your blessings on these, your servants, that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may continue to be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh,
service full time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. As you wish. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
and you are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. At St. Richard's, you have two options for receiving communion. You're welcome to come to the rail. I'll put um, a wafer in your hand, and you can entink the wafer in the chalices as the chalice bearers come around. You can remain seated in your pews with your right hand over your left to signal to Joe and Cheryl that you um, want to receive one of our handy-dandy pandemic communion sets um, in your pew where you are. So right hand over your left, you can remain seated.
So I just, I just realized uh, we haven't uh, thrown really anything in for 4th of July except hot dogs and bingo, <clears throat> which is happening after the service. So I said to Joe, our deacon, thank you, Joe, for serving as our, our deacon today. And by the way, Rich Wilson is not here, but it's not because it's his last Sunday. Our deacon, Rich Wilson, is moving to Venice, Florida. He's uh, just gone to get Kathy in Illinois, bring her back, and they'll have a, a, at least two or three more weeks with us. As soon as I know what Sunday is going to be his last Sunday, we'll throw him some sort of party out there, yes. So I say to Joe, we haven't done anything for uh, 4th of July for our Independence Day weekend. And I said, should we do something? He said, prayer for the nation. I said, um, you want to do it? And he said, couldn't hurt. <laughs> so true. So I'm going to pray before our, we pray our post-communion prayer. I'm going to pray... On page 820, just uh, so you know, we have all these wonderful prayers where we, you know, get our 50 and 51 and the 800s is where we have all of these wonderful prayers and one very specifically for our country. It's on page 820, and just in case uh, you want to look at it. Let us pray on this 4th of July weekend. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues, and do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail, all which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That covers it, wouldn't you say? Amen. All right. Thank you, Book of Common Prayer. And now on uh, page 14 of your service bulletin, let us pray our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is found... On page 15, ye servants of God, your master proclaim. Another good one. Please stand. <laughs> 